What is up, whatever everyone? Paul from Timeless Productions here, and today we're going to be going over how to get every single legendary weapon inside of Dead Island 2. So these can be obtained by different side quests, different things you have to do within the game. One of them is for just beating the actual story mode, and once you've done all of that, you can get all eight of these amazing legendary weapons inside of Dead Island 2 and just tear your way through any zombies any enemy or adversary that you see fit so we're gonna go ahead and start with the blood rage so with the blood rage right here all we're gonna do is head over here to Venice Beach to the lifeguard tower now this is after I've beaten the game you guys can do this before you beat the game as long as you have the pier open not Venice Beach the pier so once you come out of the lifeguard tower, there's going to be a crusher by the name of Dante. You're going to go ahead and just kill him. Once you're done killing him, he's going to drop a piece of paper that we're going to need in order to start his quest. So once you kill him, you'll get fool's gold and you'll have to follow the note he drops, which is a totally legit letter. Once you pick that up, it tells you to go to Dante's locker inside of the building right next to the lighth lighthouse tower. So pretty easy, it's right here in this back corner, Randy's locker, and we're going to follow the paper trail to Dante's meetup point. So now we're going to go ahead and head to the end of the pier right by where this fuse box happens to be. Now once we get over here to this fuse box, we're going to go ahead and grab the another piece of paper right over here on this bench. So we're going to head over here, grab the meeting of the minds piece of paper right there at the end, like I said. And now we're going to have to head to the opposite side of the pier, back on the regular street over here in this very far corner by this blue building on the end. So once we get here, it's going to be the merry-go-round cafe and yogurt air, uh, place. So right in the back alley to the left of the building, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves another piece of paper to go ahead and get the next step. So flaws in the plan, go ahead and pick that up and now we have to find the buried safe. Now the buried safe is literally right outside the lifeguard tower, right on this back alley area to its left or right depending on which way you're looking at it from. Now, I came in from the back way. If you go to this little alley area, there's going to be the buried safe on the left side, buried inside of the sand. Now, once we get to where the safe is, we're going to go ahead and hold our action button. Depending on what console you're on, if you're on Xbox, you're going to hold X. If you're on PlayStation, of course, you're going to hold Square. Once you hold X or Square, boom. You're going to have to kill every single zombie that spawns, so go ahead and just wipe them out. I use Fury to make it a lot easier and a lot faster. Now, once you're done doing that, it's going to tell you to dig up the buried treasure. So head back over here to the buried safe. Go ahead and hold your action button, and once you do that, the blood rage will pop out, and we'll get our very first legendary weapon. Now, if you don't have one, if you haven't beaten the story yet, when you go for this mission, you will go ahead and grab the achievement for getting a legendary weapon as well. So these are all the stats for the Blood Rage right then and there and all you're going to do is be able to use it. It's a really good dagger in my opinion. It does bleed damage and is absolutely amazing. Now moving on we're going to go ahead and have the Blood Count. This is an AK-47 assault rifle. So with this we're going to go ahead and head over here to Venice Beach to the tower where Rodriguez actually is. So once we go ahead and get to the tower, we're gonna have to go ahead and fight our way up to the top. Once you get to the top, there's a bunch of traps leading to it, by the way. So make sure you're watching out for those and don't do anything that I end up doing, which is I ran into probably every single trap inside of the tower, which right here, right when I walked inside of the door, there's a trap directly to your right that I walked right into the mine or into the line and ended up getting burnt to death. So once you get to the top, Rodriguez will be here waiting for you. Just go ahead, walk up to her, and you're going to have to speak with her in order to begin a side quest before we can actually go ahead and get the blood count. She'll tell you, she'll give you the mission Cremains of the Dead. And once you get that mission, you're going to have to head out the back way of the tower to the beach and you're gonna have to light up these three death pits as she calls them 
Now, they're pretty simple. All you have to do is either use an explosive or you can go ahead and shoot the barrels right next to it. It'll light these on fire very fast. Once you're done doing that, you're going to head back up to Rodriguez, talk to her again, and you'll finish that side quest. Now, you're going to go ahead and talk to her one more time. Once you do that, you'll get your next quest. So we're going to have to head back over to where we went during the main story by where the tents are. We're going to go to the very left tent on the end in order to find a certain zombie that we're going to have to kill in order to pick up a file that he actually drops to go ahead and grab ourselves the blood count. So once you get in here, you'll see right over there on the right side, Lieutenant Ford is going to be feasting on a dead body. Go ahead, just kill him as fast as you possibly can, and he'll drop the redacted file. Now, once you go ahead and pick up the redacted file, we're going to have to head directly back to the tower on the very opposite side once again. So, it's going to say, of course, follow the paper trail, and all you're going to do is head back to the tower. And once you get back to the tower, you're just going to have to go around towards where the cremains of the dead mission was out on the beach. So go ahead, exit out of this door right here. You can go towards your right past these crates and you're going to turn right one more time to come to the like side area of the tower. There's going to be some zombies here. It may vary on what kind of zombies are there, but once you kill them, you're going to head into the crate on the left. There's going to be some boxes you'll have to destroy. But once you destroy those boxes right over here in the back is going to be the priority asset uh, box. Go ahead push your action button and boom the blood count will come or body count will come flying out and you can pick up the greatest legendary weapon in dead island 2 the ak-47 assault rifle it's probably the best weapon that you'll get from these legendaries so definitely make sure you grab this one as soon as you possibly can destroy zombies like it's absolutely nothing whatsoever as you guys can see right there boom couple of shots takes them down like very fast very easily amazing weapon so this is going to go ahead and be the stats for the body count go ahead and pause the video if you want to see them all and we're going to go ahead and jump into our very next one here we have ourselves the party starter brass knuckles that do flame damage it's absolutely pretty cool so first we're going to go ahead and head over to ocean avenue once you get to Ocean Avenue and you're inside of the safe room, all you're going to do is head right outside of the safe room and just follow the path that I'm going to be taking. So head through the door, head directly across this bridge. Once you get over here, we're going to go ahead and head down these stairs right here. Once you get here, just head down more flights of stairs. And once you get to the very bottom, you're going to head through this door and a zombie is going to come flying out go ahead and kill this zombie really fast now once you go ahead and kill this zombie another one's going to be feasting on the other one inside of the bathroom and we're going to go ahead and pick up dudes who chug once you grab this you're going to start yourself another lost and found quest drunk and disorderly now we're going to head back up to the safe room and we're going to fast travel to venice beach so once you get to Venice Beach, you're going to go ahead and head right outside the Blue Crab Shack and it's going to be this building directly next to it. So just follow the path once again that I am taking. Once you head out this door, head to your right and head towards the front of the building towards the street. Once you get to the street, head directly to your right past the bus right there. It's going to be directly to the right of that bus and it's going to be Rose's Tattoos that you're gonna have to go ahead and enter in in order to find the next part of this mission. So go ahead, hit the, do uh, hit the button to open up the door and head inside. Once you get inside, right here behind the desk, there's going to be a screamer. So make sure that you take out the screamer as fast as possible, as well as another zombie that we're gonna have to kill in order to pick up the next file. So once you kill him, he'll drop this note due to get inked go ahead and grab it from him right then and there now we're gonna head over here to the opposite side of Venice Beach which is going to be gangrenes so once you come out of Rose's tattoo just head directly down the beach line in order to get to the opposite end now this is where during the story you'll fight the crusher that actually puts himself on fire this is when you first get the flame crushers or incinerary crushers inside of the game 
So we're just going to go ahead, head directly all the way to that store. Now once we get there, there's going to be a zombie that has to spawn in order for us to kill and pick up the very next note. So if the zombie doesn't spawn, just wait around a little bit, kill as many uh, zombies that spawn around as you possibly can, and he'll eventually spawn. His name is Cole, actually. As you guys can see, it's going to be directly out front and right to our right where that broken garage is. He's going to go ahead and crawl out of there. Right there, as you guys saw, Cole crawled out. And we're just going to go ahead and kill all these zombies. And once we're done and we kill Cole, you'll get the file, dudes who get the munchies. Now, once you grab this one, we're going to have to head down to the pier in order for us to get our very next one. You're going to head directly right when you get on the pier. It's going to be right there where that blue part is that I marked. So we're going to go ahead and leave the lifeguard tower and we're going to head up these stairs. Once we get up here, it's going to be the building on our left over there where that uh, blue awning is. And there's going to be a file sitting right there on the table for us. So go ahead and grab this very next file, dude interrupted. And we're going to get a mission to have to kill a slobber by the name of Jordan. So we're going to head a little bit back to where we just came from. And over here to our left is going to be Jordan all decked out in bling and jewelry. We're just going to go ahead, kill him as fast as we possibly can and grab our very next file from him. Now, once you kill him, you'll get the car keys. Now, once you get the car keys, we're going to have to head back to the safe house and we're going to have to head back to Ocean Avenue. Once we get to Ocean Avenue, follow the path that I'm taking. Just go ahead, drop down here. We're going to run to the opposite side of this mall and we're going to head through these doors this time instead of the ones towards the bathroom. Now, once you get down here, we're going to head towards the parking garage where Jordan's car just happens to be sitting and waiting for us to grab the party starter brass knuckles it's going to be the one on the opposite end the white truck over there on my left you're just gonna head to the back where the trunk is hold your action button and boom party starter brass knuckles will drop from it now the alarm will go off so you'll have to kill a bunch of zombies but this gives us just a best time for us to go ahead and try to use and show these off they're absolutely amazing after a couple of hits zombies just literally explode like it's nothing so very simple, very easy to get the party starter brass knuckles. Now, of course, at the end, I'm going to go ahead and show you the stats for the brass knuckles. You can go ahead and pause the video and we're going to go ahead and jump right in to our very next one. So next up, we have the one Claymore sword. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Now, we're going to have to go ahead and head to Monarch Studios. For this, you're going to need the side quest. It came from Monarch Studios that you can grab from the radio inside of the Blue Crab. Now, once you get here, you're going to have to go ahead and kill all of the zombies here in order to save Sarah. So go ahead, kill all of the zombies. Once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and head over here and speak to Sarah. And she's going to go ahead and continue the side quest for you. She's going to tell you you have to find Sebastian. You have to bring this bag to him. So we're going to go ahead and grab the bag and we're going to head to all the side point uh, checkpoints in order for us to find Sebastian. The first one's going to be over here inside of Studio 3. Now, once you head out of Studio 3 and you follow these checkpoints, you're going to find Sebastian just chilling up here on the scaffolding. Once you get here, you're going to have to clear out any zombies that followed you in order for you to place the bag down. So go ahead and just kill any zombies that happen to wander in happened to follow you or picked up your scent once you've killed all of them grab the bag and head over here to this table and place it down and we're going to go ahead and speak to sebastian now once you talk to sebastian he's going to tell you that you have to go ahead and head over here to this trailer so we're going to head over here and once we get here we're going to go ahead and find sarah inside of the trailer and we're going to go ahead and speak with her so head inside of the trailer and you'll find her right over here to our left and we're just going to go ahead and talk to her and we'll grab ourselves another side quest, the Terror of Sound Stage 7. Now we're going to go ahead and head over to Sound Stage 7 right over here on the map. And once we get here, we'll have to kill all of the zombies inside of the ruins set of the area. Once you've killed all of them, you're going to head over here to the city set. 
and you're gonna have to do the exact same thing and then we're gonna have to draw ourselves out a terror of sound stage seven which is going to be a special kind of butcher now doing this we're gonna have to inspect these bodies first so go ahead and the first one is right here the second you walk inside of the city set the next one is to our left on top of this taxi and on these scaffoldings and we're gonna go ahead and inspect this one once you come down over here we're gonna head directly to our right and it's going to be in this little corner right over here we're gonna go ahead and grab and inspect the final corpse once you do that you're gonna have to draw some zombies in eight or uh, I think eight to be exact or five five to be exact in order for us to go ahead and draw out the butcher so we're just gonna go ahead and lead the five zombies inside and you want to bring them pretty far inside in order for it to count as you guys can tell they're inside of the city set but they have to be like directly over here in the middle section now once you bring them in here to the middle you're just gonna go ahead and kill all five of the zombies that you've lured in and once you've done that the butcher will spawn and you're gonna have to go ahead and kill the butcher so we're gonna have to use the special effects in order to draw him out once we draw him out like I said we're just gonna go ahead and kill him like normal and he'll be right there towards the blue light uh, area where the door is and he's just gonna be crawling around just go ahead and head up kill him as fast as you possibly can and once you've done that we're gonna go ahead and head back to the trailer and talk to Sarah once again now once we go ahead and head over here and talk to Sarah she's gonna go ahead and end the mission right there now we're gonna have to head over to Hollywood Boulevard now make sure you guys have either beaten the game or gotten towards the very end of the game Hollywood Boulevard is the final area that you get inside of the main story so make sure you've done at least one of those that you've at least unlocked it or you've beaten the game so we're gonna go ahead and head out towards where the helipad is now if the guy Sebastian doesn't uh, spawn inside of the safe room you're gonna have to do all of the Amanda Styles missions now once you've done all the Amanda Styles missions he will spawn so if you've done that before and then got to this point then you know he's gonna be inside of the safe house so go ahead and speak to him and he'll give you the mission beacon of hope so we're gonna go ahead and head from the safe room over to the old Chinese theater so once we get over there we're gonna go ahead and find Sarah just chilling on top of the window go ahead and kill all the zombies first before you speak with her of course because that's how Dead Island 2 works you have to kill all the zombies before you can speak to anyone so go ahead and speak to Sarah and she'll give you another mission to find the this like thing to put on the big light in order to shine a beacon which is basically like a bat symbol so we're gonna head down to the metro to the subway right by the helipad and once you get to where the marker tells you to you're gonna have to destroy these three panels in order for you to unlock the door the first one is to the right of the door the second one is over here to the left of the door a little bit higher than you would expect and then the third one is inside of the door on the opposite side of the window so you're gonna have to shoot it or throw something through it in order for you to go ahead and break that one now once you've broken all three of these you're just gonna go ahead and head inside of there break this box in the corner and grab the filter on it now we're just gonna go ahead head back up to Hollywood Boulevard and head back to the old Chinese theater once you get to the old Chinese theater though fireworks are gonna be going off so you're gonna have to go ahead and kill all the zombies that it's attracting in order for you to go ahead and continue the mission so just go ahead and as they're all coming just kill them all as fast as you possibly can of course and once you've done all of that you're gonna have to speak to Sarah one final time after you put the filter on so right over here on this light we're gonna go ahead and put the filter on and boom once you put it on side of the spotlight the beacon will shine on this building directly across from us and it's going to be a fox head for some odd reason like I said it's like a bat symbol once you speak to Sarah we're gonna go ahead and head back over here to the safe house to Sebastian and once you speak with Sebastian for the final time he'll drop you the one sword and you'll also get an achievement if you haven't done the mission beacon of hope yet so it's kind of a plus plus you'll get an achievement and you'll get a legendary weapon 
so like I said we're gonna go ahead and show off the one a little bit so you guys can see how amazing this is it's really good at dismembering zombies very fast it does not do shock damage I just happened to hit the um the little thing on my right and cause shock damage but it's a pretty good it also sends zombies flying for the most part from what I've seen so very good sword if that's what you're looking for so at the very end I'm gonna go ahead and show you off the stats and we're gonna go ahead and head on to our very next one right now alright moving on to our next one we have the big shot revolver so for this one we're gonna go ahead and head back to Bel Air to Emma Emma John's house once you get here there's going to be loose Lucinia Lucinia right here on the couch we're gonna go ahead and talk to her and she's gonna talk about some earthquakes happening around it and you're gonna get the side mission it's not your fault so we're gonna go ahead and head down to the sewers once you get towards the sewers right out here inside or right next to the white truck you're gonna pick up your very first um, file which is going to be the seismometer placement file once you grab that we're gonna have to head deeper into the sewers the next one is going to be a little bit further down the sewer this is once you come out of Patton's place and you're actually through the sewer a little bit more and you're gonna head to your right through here and once you get down this long hallway electric is going to shoot out from the left side and our next file and our first seismometer crate is going to be right here so we're gonna go ahead and open it up next we're gonna have to head to the second seismometer so as you're going through a little bit further down the tunnels of the sewers it's going to be down the long tunnel and it's going to be over here directly to your right is going to be the keys right by this caustic pipe valve and we're gonna go ahead and grab the keys from this dead body right here then we're gonna head a little bit further down and on the very left side of the same tunnel you're gonna find the second seismometer inside of it the third one is going to be once you get to where the slobberers are you're gonna find this file that's gonna tell you you have to find the third get a key which is gamma you're gonna head through this hallway of fire turn it off and you're gonna head into this area where there's a whole bunch of like sludge of human remains there's also going to be a screamer so make sure you kill the screamer as fast as you possibly can in order for you to go ahead and go through these meat slurries now head through all the groups the key is actually going to be through the tunnel on the right side you're gonna go ahead and inspect this slurry of meat and boom you're gonna go ahead and grab your third seismometer key we're gonna head back up to that office area there might be a butcher up there for you guys there was one up here for me so I'm not sure if that's a constant spawn or not go ahead and kill it if it is and we're gonna go ahead and open our third seismometer crate right there on the table now once we open up the third one we're gonna have to find the final seismometer we're gonna grab this file that's going to tell us that the final one is inside the main septic tank this is where you had to run through inside of the main story as you guys can see you can't go any further up the stairs so it's going to be right here right by the stairs at the end of this um, area so it's gonna tell you that there's a mega quake and once you go ahead and have to kill all these zombies fight them all off it's going to be a little bit difficult at least it was for me I died a couple of times so make sure that you're prepared once you do all of that you're gonna have to head back up to Emma John's house in Bel Air and go ahead and turn in your mission once you get here just go ahead and talk to Lasenia again and she's gonna go ahead and drop for you the big shot revolver so go ahead and grab the big shot it's an absolutely amazing revolver if that's what you guys like using it basically explodes into splash damage and explosion damage it's absolutely amazing in my opinion it's like a executioner from black ops 2 basically it's a shotgun revolver it's amazing so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and show off the stats for you so you guys can see exactly how good this weapon is and we're gonna go ahead and jump on to our very next one next up we have the Krakatoa so for this axe or tomahawk or hatchet whatever you want to call it pretty much an axe 
we're gonna go ahead and head over here to Ocean Avenue and we're gonna have to do the lost and found persons quests so just go ahead and head over here now you're gonna have to do five of them before you actually get the main one we need for the Krakatoa so this one might take you a while in order for you to get it but once you've done the first five of the missing persons all you're gonna do is head back to Ocean Avenue and you're gonna need Steve now once you get Steve's missing person all you're gonna do is go ahead and pick it up and it's gonna lead you out to Monarch Studios once again so we're gonna go ahead and fast travel our way to Monarch Studios in order to figure out what the hell a happened to Steve so head over to Monarch Studios and once you get here we're gonna have to head to Soundstage 3 so once you get to Soundstage 3 you're gonna have to check the bed inside of it for Steve's to-do list once you grab the list on the bed we're gonna head over here to the kitchen and you're just gonna go ahead and inspect the things that I inspect so the soap and toothbrush over here by the sink we're gonna go ahead right over here is going to be the water bottles right to our right on the ground is going to be the box of food and right over here to our right on the stairs is going to be the answering machine that we're gonna go ahead and inspect once you get that we're gonna have to head to Jimmy's trailer which is going to be a little bit further from where we are so right over here by soundstage 7 is going to be Jimmy's trailer once you get here, you're going to go ahead and open up this door and you're going to find Sergio over here on the ground dead. Go ahead and pick up Sergio's phone and kill Sergio when he awakens to feast on you. So once you grab Sergio's phone, you're going to have to head to Beverly Hills to Steve's house. That's where he disappeared to and went. So head over here to Beverly Hills and Steve's house is going to be right over here towards the bottom of the map. And we're gonna head here and once we get here we're gonna have to go ahead and speak with Steve if any zombies have followed you or any zombies are around make sure that you go ahead and kill them really fast in order for you to actually speak with Steve of course like in Dead Island 2 fashion you do have to kill any zombies before talking to anyone so go ahead and speak with Steve and he's gonna tell you that he wants three zombies for auditions a hero a villain and a um I can't remember what the third one was anyway oh a hot hunk so go ahead and grab the three zombies the first one is going to be the firefighter which is the hero and don't kill the zombies you're gonna have to lead them back to Steve's house first so we're gonna go ahead and lead the hero down the stairs and all you're gonna do is go ahead and bring it right over here now if there's any zombies at all make sure that you kill them before any of these guys get there because if they die before they get there you're screwed so just make sure that you kill any zombies that you see by Steve's house in Steve's house whatever it is you're gonna lead them up here and Steve is gonna do some talking and once he says that you're good to kill the hero you're gonna go ahead and kill the hero or whatever one that you've brought so go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and kill the hero right here boom just like that as fast as I possibly can whenever just smash his head in and now we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves the villain which is going to be this butcher right over here go ahead and run it back to Steve's house now these zombies are pretty close to Steve's house so you don't have to worry about running too far or leading them back too far which is very good because there's a chance they could die by anything at this point especially in this game with things randomly exploding zombies exploding all of that so once you kill the villain we're gonna go ahead and grab the third and final zombie which is going to be the hot hunk which is going to be directly down the stairs to our right across the cliffside so he's just gonna be right over here now this one's gonna be a flame crusher so make sure that you try to stay as far away from him as possible not too far of course because you want to lead him but just enough so that he doesn't end up hurting you or killing you or anything like that so once you bring him up here to Steve's house again you're just gonna have to wait for Steve to speak once he's done speaking and it says to kill him, just go ahead and kill him as fast as you possibly can. And once you're done killing all three of the hero, the villain, and the hot hunk, go ahead and speak with Steve once again. 
once you speak with Steve for the third and final time, you're done and he'll give you the Krakatoa Axe, which is absolutely an amazing axe to have. So we're going to go ahead, show it off a little bit. Now, I think the Krakatoa is actually like a reference to SpongeBob, at least in my opinion, I think it is. Because, you know, that episode where Patrick was the uh, superhero and he kept saying Krakatoa. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and that's how good it is. It's absolutely an amazing act. It catches um, zombies on fire as well and just completely demolishes them like it's nothing. So, I'm going to go ahead and show off the stats, of course, in typical fashion so that you guys may see exactly how good the Krakatoa is if you guys want to go for it. If you're going for all of the legendary weapons, it's very good to have, especially considering this one takes the longest. So, probably do this one either at the beginning or at the end like I did. So, we're going to go ahead and jump into our very next one. Next one up is just the Emma's Wrath Sledgehammer, which is Sam B's Sledgehammer that he uses throughout the entire game. For this one, literally all you have to do is beat the story mode. That's literally it that you have to do for this legendary weapon. So if you haven't gone for the other ones and you've beaten the story mode, you will get the get a legendary weapon achievement from just beating the game. This is one of the greatest legendary weapons in the game as well. I absolutely love Emma's Wrath sledgehammer it's absolutely amazing and of course here's his stats and let's go ahead and jump on to our final one and the final one is going to be the brutalizer which you get from the side mission inside of beverly hills for the artist francesca here towards this red house at the very top of the map right get to this red house you're gonna see an artist right inside of her garage you're just gonna walk up and have a conversation with her once you talk to her, she's going to tell you that she needs some parts for a certain, like, picture or painting or whatever the hell she's talking about. So all you're going to do is go ahead, speak with her a couple of times, and once you're done with the entire conversation, she'll start giving you the side missions that you need. Now, there's multiple steps to this exact side quest. The first one is going to be Body Art, the Visionary. You're going to go ahead and drop 10 infected flesh in there. You can get this from regular zombies. You're going to go ahead and talk to her again. After you talk to her again, you're going to get the next part of the mission. Now, you're going to pick him up from this board right over here to our left. And this time, we're going to need five oversized arm bones. These can be obtained by killing crushers throughout the game. Now... Once you're done with this mission, you give her the oversized arm bones, you're going to have to leave. She's going to tell you leave her alone for a little bit. All you're going to do is fast travel out of Beverly Hills. You can go anywhere in the game. I went to Bel Air. And once you get there, you're just going to go ahead and fast travel directly back to Beverly Hills and head back to her house. Once you get here, you'll have another post-it. This time is for Synthotic Ichor which can be dropped by slobbers. Now, if you don't have enough, there is certain points on the map in each area where certain apex variants will spawn more frequently. You're just gonna go ahead, head there, and sometimes they will drop the things you need and sometimes they won't, so it might take multiple steps for actually getting the items that you need. Once you do that, you're gonna leave and come back again. This time, you're gonna need five in infected spine, which can be dropped by screamers. Next is gonna be three blade arms, which can be dropped by butchers. And the final one is going to be mutated hearts, which can be dropped by mutators. Again, you're just gonna leave Beverly Hills, come back every time once you do one of the side quests. For after you do the mutated hearts, you're gonna come back to our house and the backyard is going to be open. Once you enter into the backyard, you're gonna see her with this big horse like art piece that she made with the guy on the back of it very strange very very weird that this is what she made from all the parts that you got her and brought back to her well now once you do that you're gonna have your final conversation with her and she's gonna tell you about this giant piece and how amazing it is your character is going to comment on how amazing it is not. Once this whole entire conversation goes ahead and ends, 
and once you're done with that she will drop you a legendary weapon that we will see very soon and your achievement will pop side quest does take a little bit but once you get your fury mode inside of the main story uh, you'll be able to kill zombies and they'll start dropping infected flesh and all the parts that you'll need for the side quest so boom gore horse is popped and you'll get the brutalizer machete which is a legendary weapon from her we're gonna go ahead and pick it up and i'm gonna show off the brutalizer it's actually called the contagious brutalizer machete and I'm going to show it off a little bit. But that's basically all you do for the Gore Horse achievement. Very simple side quest as long as you have all the parts. All you have to do really is leave and come back. If you don't have all the parts that you need for the side quest, it might take a little bit longer. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And here's the stats for the Brutalizer. So we're going to go ahead and that's the all eight of the legendary weapons inside of Dead Island 2. Just like that. So pretty easy, pretty simple. Some of them take a little bit longer than the other ones. But with this guide, you guys should be able to get every single Dead Island 2 legendary weapon pretty easily and pretty fast. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, and remember to stay timeless.